Hey, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today I'm in the shop working on the plane. Um, I can work in my back shop on what I have. I'm making torque meters and stuff for free flight in the mornings, and then it gets too warm, then I have to wait a little while over lunch, and then the sun's on the other side, and then I can work in the garage. So um, I can work in here in the mornings if there's a breeze, uh, but it's not as comfortable as it is right now. So. Uh, anyway, so what I've got going on is um, just like um, you saw on the other one, uh, I've moved this back um, and uh, Parker gave me a hand with uh, getting this getting this cut out and, uh, and moved back and now you can see I have to route this area out here and then on this side we have to add back in. Um, what we need, basically an L-shaped piece over here, um, and take that piece out right there. And then we'll be, we'll have both sides, both tanks will be matching. Uh, I'm also gonna work on connecting um, some more stuff up here, the uh, uh, oil pressure. Um, we're gonna connect the oil temperature, which is down there on the bottom. I wanna get that connected. I have my uh, secondary ignition, um, and the, the goal was just to run all these wires at the same time, and then we've got the P-lead on the, uh, on the um, magneto that um, is going to get wired uh, to the switch, and then that's going to go to ground, and I have a ground wire that has to come from there underneath, come out the firewall here, and I think I'm going to use, um, I think I'm going to actually use this this hole on top right here for my engine ground and I just need to figure out I think it's probably the same size as this right here and then once I get through we're fooling around with the wires and getting them all short and everything in here then I can actually put these two hoses on uh, right here just to update you on the uh, on the oil leak um, I'm getting a drop like maybe every couple weeks or so and um, Scott said that's actually a minor miracle and that I should just leave it alone so I did uh, I did take that plate off um, and resealed the screws that hold that hold that support right down there you can see that uh, support piece um, anyway I took that off I resealed those screws and I know there's no oil coming from there, but that one drop every so often, I'm going to take Scott's advice and leave it alone. So, uh, so I'm kind of through messing with that for now. So now I can get some more, get some more wiring and stuff completed, uh, which would be awesome. And um, this is already, this is already shock mounted in place. Um, so I just have uh, three screws. Holding this on right now, I'll get the uh, windscreen off, and then we'll sort out some uh, sort out some wires. Let's see what I've got on the inside here. Um, all right, what I have here is. is uh, ignition one. Then I have ignition, ignition, ignition two wire. However, I'm thinking in my head that's probably reversed um, because uh, ignition two takes two wires. Ignition one takes one wire. Um, so, but I'll check that out once I get in the panel here. All right, let me get a screwdriver. I'll get this off and then we'll keep rolling.
does go to ignition one, but I, I bundled both wires from the bot top and the bottom of the switch together. I just need to take the one that goes to the bottom of the switch and send that to ground, um, which is this empty terminal I have right here. So, so we'll get that uh, get that handled, and then uh, this side of the bus bar over here is where our uh, ground will go from here up to the engine. So. And the ignition one is only one wire because the negative already goes to the, the bus bar. And there is a wiring diagram in my, in my manual here. All right, so here's what I've got, and uh, here's uh, what you can see is the red wire from coming from the uh, ignition right here. The red wire and the red wire from the switch, the, the positive lead from the switch actually go, um, are getting connected together, which I can do with terminals uh, right here. Um, on the coil itself, it says here that the uh, the red wire can be attached to either terminal on the coil, and then the white wire just attaches to the other screw. So, uh, I believe what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the white wire, uh, get a terminal for that, and get that attached. Then I can put this back on. Then this one is exposed for me in the front, where I can easily get the terminal uh, get the terminal on that one. So I'll get this white one, uh, get my tools out, get a terminal on that one, and get it attached. Then I can put the coil back on. And uh, once that's back on, then we'll be able to uh, work on getting the positive leads going here. And I've only got one, I've only got one lead coming for the second ignition. And um, let's see, ignition two. It's my third switch. So one of those, the top of the switch, is already going to the positive terminal. Uh, my battery's not connected, so... <laughs> um, it's coming off the top of the switch, and it's actually going to this terminal right here. So, so that's already connected, so that's why I just have the one wire. So I'm going to get this ignition one terminal in place and first I got to feed the wire over here. I was just feeding it across here but uh, I'm not very happy with the way it crosses these wires down here. I want it to go underneath so I need to pull it back and uh, feed it down underneath those wires. You can see it right there. Um, so, let's do that. Then I can come around here with my crimper. Make sure I can see my wire on the end here. When I say on the end, I just want to see the wire come out of the terminal a little bit. Give it a good tug. All right, all good. And on the back side, we make sure we've crimped the, uh, the sheathing as well. It's 
see I need to find this find this socket size. I'll be right back. Now we're sending uh, sending that switch to ground, and then the single wire that's coming underneath for ignition one right here. is going to the top of the switch. All right, so I got my grommet here that's gonna go through the firewall. And what I've gotta do is figure out uh, Figure out what um, got to figure out what size hole I need to drill. Pretty sure that's three eighths inside. So it's a half inch hole. So we'll take the drill and the step bit and we'll go, let's see, hopefully we go to half inch. Yep, we go exactly to half inch. So get that hole in place. We can get some wires uh, run through there. And uh, keep, uh, keep pressing on here. All right, I want to come in somewhere close to the top here. Uh, got my coil there, and I kind of like this location, like right here, because I'm going to attach to the center rail that's running across the top there. Um, there'll be a <clears throat> a clamp for this casing um, up there, and then um, that casing fits the grommet. And so the grommet will be right, right about there. Just somewhere between the coil and the magneto. And I'm using my flex drive for this because it's the only way I can get in there. So we'll be able to get that to work. Um, I just realized I do not have the right terminals for 18 gauge wire and this size uh, screw, which I'll have to measure. I'm not sure what size this is, uh, but I will uh, 
I'll figure that out. Meanwhile, we're going to connect. I do have what I need. <clears throat> well, yeah. I have what I need for one thing. I don't have it for this either, so I've got to measure this as well. So, let me get my calipers. Be right back. I'm just going to show you these uh, Zach turned me on to these, and I, I can't imagine why I ever used anything else because they're just amazing. Uh, they hold the wire and then they strip the wire and it's just perfect. And then with my crimpers, just like to get it to start it with just a slight amount of pressure. All right, so that connects to the oil temperature sender, which is right down here. Let's take that screw off of there. So, got it on there. Well, I just got to get this washer in. Uh, nut back on there. figure out I will tighten it up later and figure out the best the best path here but basically this guy to come up here and then uh, just go into our into our grommet hole right here Over here somewhere we'll create some kind of a standoff for it uh, probably probably off of this uh, rubber tubing right there a couple zip ties and um, we'll get it uh, sort of isolated right there so we've got this screw it's just over 3 16 we've got this screw that's uh, 3 16 both terminals on the uh, Dyna coil are 3 16 so I've got to get some terminals for uh, 3 16 wire um, for uh, 18 gauge. Uh, and then I'm using uh, 20 gauge for, for uh, some of it, 18 gauge for some of it. It's, 
it's really not putting out any serious voltage so um, 20, 20 gauge is actually fine I just need the terminal for that so it's a red terminal that fits 3 16 uh, bolt and this is metric I'll have to just drill that one out just slightly because uh, it's uh, oh if I do it if I check it if I check it as metric it's basically uh, it's like 4.86 4.87 or it's like 192 or something like that so we got that one I don't have what I need for that I don't have what I need for that um, so but we did get the uh, switch for the magneto figured out there so now we just have to get it in place, both the primary and the secondary. So I can now, I can at least get those cables run up through the grommet here, and uh, and then we'll we'll go from there. So since Scott already had uh, this bracket right here, um, I'm going to actually use this area. I'm going to use the same location for the uh, for the engine ground, and I don't have to worry about another uh, another bolt over here. Just, just cleaning the paint off of this. All right, that looks pretty good. That'll give me a good ground spot right there. And this bolt is uh, basically a quarter inch, so slightly under a quarter inch, but that's okay if I use a quarter inch terminal. 6.2 millimeter, which means I'm going to need a um, another terminal, which I don't have for... Uh, For a uh, quarter inch for 12 gauge wire so that'll be a yellow terminal so I'll just loosely put this back together so we don't lose anybody All right, so thanks for hanging out with me today. Um, you know, every uh, <clears throat> everything is a step forward, so I try and keep that in perspective at all times. And uh, haven't heard any news lately on the propeller. Um, a few weeks have gone by since the last communication, and they were asking me um, when I was going to be ready for it. So I'm thinking that they might be taking some of that time that I gave them um, as far as when I'm going to be ready. As you know, I'm in line for a hangar at uh, Fox Field anyway, and uh, so I'm not necessarily in any big hurry for the propeller because we've got urethaning of that second wing and aileron, and then covering, and I am going to rib stitch, so you'll get to see that whole process as well. So we've still got some ways to go before I'll be ready to turn this engine over, so um, no big deal on the propeller. And yeah, so uh, hey, um, for you new subscribers who actually put me over a thousand, um, thank you very much and welcome to the channel. I hope you uh, find this enjoyable and uh, that you enjoy the information that I share and most of all um, that you enjoy watching me build my Minimax 1100R or the Scott Kessler Half VW. All right, so I'll catch you later.